Uh, most of us grew up with the voices of my first guest, uh, Bugs Bunny, Porky Pig, Sylvester, Tweety Pie, Daffy Duck, Elmer Fudd, Yosemite Sam, Barney Rubble are just a few of the cartoon voices that this man has immortalized. It's a pleasure to welcome Mr. Mel Blank. Mel, welcome. <laughs> What's up, David? <laughs> uh, that's a great sweater you have there. Oh, thank you very much. I like it, too. Yeah. Uh, now, that's not your actual voice, is it? No, I have a very deep voice. Uh, do, you, uh, do, you do you remember the first uh, voice that you did? Yes, I do. I remember the first voice I did. Now, that's oh, your so real voice right there. This is my it? real voice, yeah. yeah. The first voice I ever did was this. <laughs> that was a, I don't remember it, but that uh, was the first yeah. voice. Uh, um, as, so aside from the, the list of folks, or list of characters that we uh, mentioned in the introduction, uh, what others have you been responsible for? Well, there's a Yosemite Sam. That's a real raucous cowboy. And uh, of course, there's a Pepe Le Pew. He's the little French skunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He kills the pussy cat. Mm -hmm. yeah, a... And uh, Foghorn, I say, fo uh, pay attention, David. A Foghorn <laughs> Lego. That big rooster, he talks like that, you know. You looking for chicken? You see that little house over there that says D O G? That spells chicken. Go get him, boy. <laughs> uh, now, we, we have some, uh, uh, I guess, some clips here of uh, some of your work. Do you know uh, it's going to be. Oh, this composite. is kind of a montage. Yeah, a montage. Oh, yeah. There's a few of the characters that are in the picture. Okay. All right. We'll take a look at that. Okay. And uh, is there uh, anything you need to explain to us before we look at it? Well, they're just a bunch of nutty people, that's all. Okay. So this yeah. is... Uh... Pew! Pew! No, no. Not Pew. Le Pew. Pepe Le Pew is my name. Why can't we have a mouth like other pussycats? I'll tell you what. Let's take a walk in the woods while our porridge cools. Now, where have I heard that before? Hey, sir, I represent the Rambling House Storybook Company, and... Come on in, stranger. We've been waiting for you. And the uh, penguins, it says here, comes from the South Pole. South Pole? Ooh, I'm dying! <laughs> go about creating a voice? Do you get a voice and then say, draw something to go along no, with this, or do no. they come to you and say... They show me a picture of the character, mm -hmm. and then they say, uh, they show me a storyboard, which shows what the character's going to do in the cartoon. From this, I have to create the voice, like Bugs, they said, was a tough little stinker. So I thought, which is the toughest voice in this country, the Brooklyn or the Bronx? So I uh, put the two of them together, that's how I got the voice <laughs> from Bugs, Doc. <laughs> and Porky, they said, was a, uh, a timid little character. So I went out to a pig farm and wallowed around with the pigs. I wanted to be authentic. <laughs> and uh, when I went back to the studio, they kicked me out and said, go home and take a bath. <laughs> Which I didn't want to come back. They said, I said, if a pig could talk, you talk with a grunt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why parking at his voice. It will be, it will be, it will be, it will be. Now you've done 5,000 voices. Is that possible? No, I've worked in 5,000 different cartoons. Uh -huh. And uh, actually, I do about 400 different voices. And uh, in each dialect, you can do many different voices. Yeah, do you have any that, uh, there must be some that are similar in the 400 that you've done? Uh, no. There's, uh, <laughs> they're not similar. I mean, you can recognize each, each one differently. Uh -huh. Like in one picture I show in my college speeches, uh, there's all, all Italian. Like Columbus discovers America along with Bugs Bunny. And the Columbus, he talks it down here, you see. He talks in Italian, a dialect like it is. And the Bugs, he talks, said the world is, she's around, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and various, you can do different uh, voices in different, different uh, dialects. Yeah. All right, we're going to uh, pause here. We've got to uh, go away for, a, you know, a commercial, and we'll be right back with Mel Blanc. <laughs> Hi there. 
Mel Blank is uh, here now. Hunter Thompson will be with us uh, later in the half hour. Marjorie Gross is also here tonight. How long does it take to make a, a cartoon? Well, uh, to make a six and a half minute cartoon in full animation took 125 people nine months to make one single fully animated cartoon. Mm -hmm. uh, and even then it cost around $50,000. And today it would cost around a half a million. But Warner Brothers still do only full animation. Uh -huh. Now, by full animation compared to what? Well, compared to limited animation. Now, the films you see today, the cartoons, are limited animation. They draw maybe one in ten frames, where Warner's draws every single frame. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's much cheaper drawing just one frame and having the mouth move a little bit in the background on a turntable that you see over and over again. Uh, and also for, uh, for uh, television using cartoons, they need them a lot more quickly than they could be produced in full animation, yes. I'm guessing. Yes, and uh, full animation actually is uh, what makes every, every motion believable. Yeah. And every uh, synchronized lip movement equal. And incidentally, they do the, the voice first and the cartoon after the voice is, is done. Mm -hmm. They draw to the voice. Most people don't know that. Yeah. What, if, what happens if you get a cold and you have to go to work? Does, it, does that uh, goof things up? I was going to say I kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I usually can talk over a cold, but I try to keep away from it as much as I can. Yeah, yeah. How did you, uh, tell me about your relationship with Jack Benny. How did that begin? Well, uh, Jack finally found that I was the one doing the crazy voices in the cartoons, and he called me in and asked me to do uh, Carmichael, a bear that was eating the uh, gas man down and he's guarding his vault. And uh, I said, yes. I, he said, what would he sound like? I said, maybe like this. <laughs> he said, good, good, you're on next week. <laughs> For six months, that's all I did was the growl of a bear. Finally, I said to him, you know, Mr. Benny, I can also talk. Well, Jack fell down when I told him. Yeah. He said, I'll have the writers write something in for you. Yeah. And so you, they you, did. Yeah, you did, uh, you were on the show a lot and did, did many other noises and sounds and voices. That's right. He had a parrot there that couldn't talk. And he asked me if I'd uh, talk like a parrot. I said, what? Where did the shapes came? Where did the shapes came? <laughs> what? And uh, then uh, he had a train caller at the depot who would right. say, uh, train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop. Come on, guys. <laughs> well, one time, uh, they were supposed to be the sound of his uh, Maxwell. He had a 1926 Maxwell. And uh, the phonograph record that the sound effects men used uh, had the motor sound on it, and they'd hold their finger on it to make it go slow and stop. Well, when it came to that cue, I saw that they had forgot to put the electric plug into the socket. And I jumped up to the microphone, and I made like a, a 1926 Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> what was the uh, what was the character? Was his name Sai? She. Yeah. <laughs> now, what was that character? Well, that was a cute character. I came in with a sombrero on my head, a sarapi over my shoulder, and a big bass violin. And Mr. Benny said, uh, "You came all the way from Tijuana to play in my band." She. <laughs> And uh, I see you brought your bass violin with you. She. What's your name? Sai. Sai? She. <laughs> and I see you brought a young lady with you. Is that your sister? She. Uh, what's her name? Sue. <laughs> Sue? She. Well, what does she do for a living? So. <laughs> That's all there was to the whole spot with Jack Younger. <laughs> uh, we, we have uh, some more film. Now, this would be a, a, a new film, a new cartoon, feature length. Is that right? No, I think, no, I think this is a, a gold rush. This is uh, Bugs Bunny, uh, third motion picture. And it's called uh, A Thousand and One Bugs Bunny Nights. Mm -hmm. Or A Thousand Wild Hair Nights, something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, I haven't even seen the whole thing yet. Okay, so this, this is not... Good, this it's is a new, not, pic, new picture. Oh, this is a new picture. Yes, it'll be shown probably in theaters. Okay, well, that, yeah, that'd be a good place to yes. start. Uh, all right, uh, 1,001... What was it? 1,001 nights. A thousand nights. Oh! It's... it's uh, 
1001. 1001 Rabbit Tales. Rabbit Tales. Just Bugs Bunny's third movie, 1001 Rabbit Tales. Yeah. All right. And that will be out shortly, huh? Yes, very soon. All right. It's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very Dave. much. Mel Blank, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. We'll go away here for station identification, and uh, we'll be right back with Hunter Thompson and Marjorie Gross. <laughs>